have but one fear, destroying the dream of the Federation. Compared to such a loss, I do not fear the Klingon Empire. Space episode of right. Superhero Junkie! Yeah. Yeah. All right, now we are joined here today with Alec Peters. Now, Alec, Alec. is the yeah. genius creator of Star Trek Axanar. Yeah. Yeah. Alec, welcome to Superhero Junkies. Great to be here. Thank you. Now, tell me about this. This Star Trek is like the 66 Star Trek. We've had the guys from Star Trek Continues on here. Yeah, sure. And this, this goes before Kirk, before the Enterprise. Yep. Do you remember wow. the Star Trek episode? Um, whom gods destroy where you see the captain and he talked about this battle with the Klingons Axanar That's what he wrote the story that was never covered in the original yeah. series right. Woo! Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it was well. I always loved that character Garth of Izar and uh, Kirk talks about him as his hero. Right. So it's like wow don't we want to know who Kirk's hero yeah, is? Kirk's yeah. such a badass. You've got to think that his hero is pretty badass himself. So that's kind of the genesis of, uh, of it. And we kind of took that look at what was this battle? Why is it required reading at the Academy? Why is he Kirk's hero? And mm -hmm. so it takes 21 years, it takes place 21 years before uh, where No Man Has Gone Before, the second pilot oh, in the first okay. Kirk episode. So yeah, so it's going to have a little different look. It's going uh -huh. to... Um, uh, be in a time period we've never seen before. You see a couple people left over from from Enterprise that are still alive, and uh, and we also see some people you'll see in TOS. Now they awesome. already have uh, Prelude to Axanar is already online. It's like 21 minutes. You can see it now, and it's awesome. It's like uh, a piece of history material that they'd show someone at Starfleet. Uh, yeah. About yeah. about what Axanar was, and it leaves off, leaves you hanging. Yeah. And what yeah. more? Total cliffhanger. <laughs> cliffhanger. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it basically shows, you know, the Federation and the Klingons, and the Klingons are taking advantage of these nice Federation boys that are coming along and want to explore, but they don't have badass ships, so they get their butt kicked, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. I yeah. mean, it's oh, the the Federation is all, uh, you know, peaceful, explore. We're going to build this Federation, and the Klingons are a, an aggressive, expansive empire. Yeah. And the two clash, and the Federation isn't quite prepared because, I mean, think of it, it's this Federation of planets, you know, originally it's Andor and Earth and Teller and Vulcan and Alpha Centauri. Well, like the United Nations here on Earth, you know, we have the United Nations, but it has no power to do anything, right? Yeah. So no one's giving it military might or anything, and that's the same situation the Federation is in. It's like each one of these planets is like, well, We'll, we'll, we'll have you ships of exploration, but we don't want to give you any military might lest you be too powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, then you come up against the Klingon Empire and they're like, pew, pew. You know? Well, I think, I think what's, what's great about it also is that when you see the, uh, the prelude to Axanar, you sort of see them building the Enterprise because they need to develop a ship that's strong enough to battle against the Klingons. So you right. see like the beginnings of how um, those, those ships were being built and which became like the standard for all the Star Trek films and everything like that. Right, yeah, so we talk about the arms race mm -hmm. and what is that like? So uh, the Ares class in Prelude is the first warship the Federation ever built because they never needed one, but now yeah. they need one, they better get their act together. And then the Constitution class, which is the Enterprise, um, is what they're, what they're in the process of building and the Klingons are developing the D7, which those are the two ships you see. So yeah. 21 years later, by the time of Star Trek, the original series, these are the main ships of the line yeah. that both, both the Federation and the Klingon Empire have. Now you've got Tony Todd, yeah. who yeah. is incredible in this He's thing. awesome. Yeah. Okay, uh, Gary Graham from Alien Nation and yeah. also from yeah. Enterprise, played a Vulcan. Um, you've got Kate Vernon from Battlestar Galactica. Uh, who else? Who else do you have? There? And Richard Hatch. And Richard Korn. Hatch! Yeah. Richard Hatch. Yeah. Can't forget Richard Hatch. <laughs> plays Karn, the Klingon. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was, um, you know, Richard, it's almost two years ago that C Richard came on board because mm -hmm. he was my first acting coach 20 years ago, and he's a good friend. And I pitched him on it, and he just jumped at it, uh -huh. jumped at the chance to play a Klingon. And then we got J.G. Hertzler, uh, who plays Martok in Deep Space Nine, and then we got Gary Graham, and then we got Kate Vernon, and then finally we got Tony Todd. And they're all just so amazing, and it really made Prelude to Axanar I, that's really it, it has enormous star power so then 
you know, a noob like me can slip in and not be offensive. <laughs> All right, now, you started this with Kickstarter, right? Yeah. And you asked for like 10 grand originally to do this to do short, prelude, this, yeah. this prelude short. And how long did it go on Kickstarter? Was it like 30 days, 60 yeah, days? Yeah, we did a 30-day Kickstarter. 30 I think days. it was March we did that. Okay. And, uh, you know, we back then we thought, well, if we just get 20 grand, uh -huh. we can like really, sh you know, shoestring this and, and do it on a... a and... Uh, we wound up getting a hundred grand, wow. you know, and uh, you know after the Kickstarter fees and the Amazon fees, yeah. and you pay for the perks for everyone, you know you wind up with about eighty grand, right? And um, and you know so we wound up spending I think close to ninety, a little over right. that, but um, that enabled us to do Prelude, and Prelude then was basically the Kickstarter video to do the to feature do the next to one. do Axnar, right? And that we got six hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars in August. From that oh, Kickstarter, wow. and that enabled us to now. You know, we just got um, this week. We just got a, a sixteen thousand square foot warehouse in Valencia. We awesome. our offer awesome. was accepted, so um, we're excited about that. Uh, and and uh, we're already talking to other people who want to use the studio. Uh -huh. um, so we're going to be building all our sets, the full bridge, corridors, everything that we need wow. to access our Klingon bridges. Uh, the works. We're going to build that up in Valencia, which is about thirty minutes north of here. Wow, oh, that's, that's so awesome. awesome. Yeah. You guys are going to have to come do one of your yeah, shows. We have yeah. yeah, All right. Now, so you've got the Klingon bridge. You've got the 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 uh, enter the, the uh, not Enterprise, but the Ares bridge. Yep. Um, that's awesome. which will double as an Enterprise bridge because you actually will see the bridge of the Enterprise. Oh wow. wow. That is cool. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah, Which, so uh, that means that we will have the fourth USS Enterprise bridge that exists in this country. Because wow. there are three other bridges in this country. Star Trek continues. Star Trek continues. One. Star Trek yeah. New Voyages has, is the uh, original. They're in, okay. up in New York. Wow. They've had one forever, which is probably right. the best replica of the bridge anywhere. Wow. And then there's a group in uh, Oklahoma that has the bridge that they got from Starship. So how do you know how to make the bridge the same way? Do you get the schematics from the original series and, and yeah, there's all that? there's a couple different plans yeah. that are out there. McMaster's has a plan. It's mm -hmm. the famous McMaster's plans that were uh, made, which are more or less accurate. Uh -huh. And uh, and then you just you know you, you you go to people who are experts on the original series bridge, and there are are people yeah. that believe it or not, there are people that that's what they 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 do. And um, James Coley, who built the bridge in New York, uh, and there's some other guys uh, around who have offered to help. And you get all these enthusiastic volunteers, Star Trek fans, yeah. that say, you know, I know the, you know, I can make the buttons, I can mm -hmm. make the the screens, I, you know, and you get them all to come in and contribute here and there. So building the Enterprise bridge is okay. actually the easy part. The Ares bridge is is a little more difficult. More importantly, we're going to have a bridge that will be able to swap between the two. Awesome. Oh, that's good. Wow. So, yeah. So you'll be able to shoot, we'll be able to shoot the Aries stuff, and then we'll be able to shoot the Enterprise stuff. And that's it'll so be the cool. same set, just it'll take a day to refit, you know, yeah. repaint, stuff like that. So when do you start shooting, and when do you think the whole thing will be wrapped that we can actually see the acts in our film? Well, um, right now we're shooting for about a May shoot. Okay. That's kind of where we're, we're estimating, uh, which gives us basically four full months here, uh, more pre-production, which we really need. Yeah. It'll give us uh, um, basically three months of set construction. Mm -hmm. um, we hope set construction will take somewhere between six and eight weeks. And then we'll be able to just rehearse and rehearse and right. just make sure that everything is buttoned up tight. Because when we get into shooting, we, we want to have a really tight shoot. Sure, we don't want to be, yeah, yeah, you don't want people to be running long. You know, we don't want to run past a 12-hour day. We don't want to have to work weekends. We want to be able to, you know, and right now it's about a 20-day shoot. It's mm -hmm. it's, wow. it's a 90-minute script right now. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so and then we hope we'll be able to get it out. October is, you know, it might be December. It uh -huh. might, if we were lucky, it'd be well, September. Well, October, you have Kamikaze in October, so you can get it out there. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. So there's a, a, a lot of great events in the fall that we could premiere it out. And we, it'll all depend on, we're, we're talking to them all right now, building out our con schedule for next year. Great, great. Well, one of the cons for next year, What what is the, one of the cons for next year? Super Junkie Donkey a, a Comic Con next year at the LA Convention Center, either September, October, November, one of those days after Comic Con. We can't compete with Comic Con, but we will be there. Yeah. Our own yeah. convention. Oh, really? That's right. Our own convention. We'll be, we'll there. be doing it. So awesome. you have to have a panel at the convention. We will definitely. Yeah. 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 You heard it here. 
All right, we're going to have a Star Trek Continues panel, but we're also going to have a Star Trek Axonar panel. Yeah! So that will be super awesome. Yeah. All right. What's now, the name of your con? Uh, I will tell you after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Top secret. Uh, Do I have to sign an NDA? Uh, yeah. Well, right now we have it called Cosplay Expo LA. So it focuses more on cosplay. And uh, that's already online already. Oh, okay. So cool. you can check that out now. But we're still deciding. We might change it or not. You know, well, we, we already have, have cosplayers for Axnar. Yeah, you have oh, cosplayers. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. There you costumes. Go. So, yeah. So that's perfect. There you go. Um, but we're still deciding. We might change it. But we've def we're definitely doing it. We're in. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Now, will there be another film, if this film does well, which I can't see why it wouldn't, the, the prelude to Axanar looks awesome. Where did you get these people that did visual effects that looks like better than the movies? I don't, I don't get it. Uh, we have a guy in Germany, Tobias Richter, uh -huh. who does Star Trek New Voyages. Oh, okay. And uh, he is a huge fan of Axanar. Um, I've been talking with him now over two years. I guess it's been two and a half years now we've been talking wow. about this. And uh, he started doing things almost two years ago. And uh, he, he has another group over there. So his company is called Lightworks. He has another group in Germany that he works with that did the Klingon, the ship crashing, the Klingon ship oh, crashing. Wow. Tennessee. Yeah. They did that. Um, and yeah, we're just lucky. These are really, really talented guys um, who work in Europe a lot. Yeah. And um, as a matter of fact, Tobias did the Enterprise D that was seen in the Next Generation Blu-rays when they had to replace wow. all the special effects. Oh, wow. So he's... Yeah, he's world world renowned, and uh, he loves our project, and uh, it makes it affordable for us. Oh, so yeah, good. so uh, yeah, and he's gearing up because there's going to be a lot of space battles. Yeah, that's cool. We're looking Sweet. forward to the space battles. Yeah. yeah. Do you have plans for another script after this? Um, yeah, we keep getting asked that question. <laughs> so we don't want to put the cart in front of the horse, but um, yes, we we would yeah. we would love yeah. to do something else. If we don't know that it's going to be this time frame. It may be, uh, we've talked a lot about doing uh, uh, early voyages of the Enterprise, like mm -hmm. seeing Robert April and the captain of the Enterprise on, on uh, you know, uh, which would still be before Kirk, still be the, roughly the same time frame. Um, there's a lot of opportunities. The, it, the, um, we have these amazing donors. You know, we have like 10,000 donors that have wow. given us three quarters wow. of a million dollars. So, and they're hungry for mm -hmm. the Star Trek that we've, we all grew up yeah. uh, on. Um, and uh, so, as long as they keep giving us money and we keep producing outstanding Star Trek, there's more to come. And yeah. uh, you know, everyone keeps saying, oh, I noticed Prelude to Axonar, it says part three of four. Well, what about parts one, two, and four? Nah. So yeah, I, we've thought about that, and you know, we never thought about it until someone asked. Yeah. And they were like, huh, well, yeah, we did kind of leave that open, didn't yeah. we? Mom, mm -hmm. let, what would that be like? What would one, two, and four, and we've had those conversations. Right. Cool. So I think there's, um, there's lots of room as long, and I, I'm signing a three-year lease on this facility. So wow. we got to right. we got to yeah. film something in it. Well, yeah. that's the way to go. That's yeah. the way to Definitely. go. So we look forward to that. Prelude to Axanar. Go see it now. And Axanar coming soon. Yeah. yeah. Superhero junkies, yeah. and we'll give you all the details. Thank you so much. Yeah.